Uh, as you're all discussing um, how Eliza is going to form a lair somewhere, I mentioned earlier the odor of charred flesh had all but dissipated from the club. Doesn't mean it had disappeared from all of your nostrils, uh, specifically Thomas. Thomas was close to the scene, as was Maya. Maya's necessity to breathe is considerably less uh, than that of Thomas. And so that odour of roasting skin hasn't left you. And you recall you, there was talk of Liza following a trail or you following a trail of supernatural. It may not even be a supernatural trail that you need to follow. Certainly, when this woman arrived in the club, she wasn't on fire. But there may be something of that odour you can follow. You are a hunter, after all. Um, yeah, um, uh, I'm going to try to f uh, pick up the same sort of scent somewhere in, in the air. Um, not sure what I, uh, it's... Should do primal, uh, primal urge and something else? I'm not sure what. To uh, yeah, I I would give you the choice. You can either use primal urge and, to be honest, I think wits again, or um, survival and wits. Um, of course, you're a survival. No, never mind. I'll go with you. <laughs> yeah, probably for the best. Uh, three successes. Oh, okay. I wasn't expecting that level of success. That's good. Um, okay. As the others among you are talking, Thomas is sniffing at the air, resembling the wolf that he truly is. He doesn't fall to his hands and feet and starts uh, baying at the moon, but you can tell he's trying to pick up a scent. And his eyes narrow as he does so. He's able to isolate the perfume that the lady was wearing. Maybe able to follow it back. It's going to be hard. It's not an easy path to follow. Especially with so many people around. But something that's reassuring to Thomas perhaps is for all the underestimation that you receive from other werewolves you are a pretty good tracker and you have tracked down quarry before okay, it's just um, usually you're not trying to track down someone who's already dead true um, I, I'll just openly say I I can I can smell her perfume and I can track her perfume um, it'll take a while considering the crowds but we can try her that direction now you trust my idea all I had to do was ask you if you eat people <clears throat> um Seems as good enough a move as any. I can get more information for Liza, but it will take some time, so I can't do that immediately. If we have a lead that we can follow right now that we can't follow once it wafts away into the air, we should probably follow it. Sound logic. What does Maya think of this assemblage of characters? I mean, this is all rather unusual. None of these creatures are alike. Maya hasn't really picked up much on how they differ from each other, or even from her, or even from humans. Um, mostly just because she doesn't know that normal people aren't supposed to have strange things about them. So the fact that they have clearly strange things, it's kind of no big deal to her. Um, Right now, she's kind of feeling a bit skewed. Um, she thought she had a lovely time with Thomas um, in the club. You know, he 
said that he'd like to be friends. They chatted each other up. You know, she stuck up for him, you know, against Garrett. And uh, now he's here with, you know, her friends. She had knows Liza, knows Connor, her friends. Uh, and he's not threatening them, quote unquote, uh, you know, very charmingly telling them to step off. And she doesn't really know how to feel about that because not only is he, you know, now threatening her friends, he's kind of lumped her in with that riffraff and, you know, we're not really sure if you're welcome here yet or not. So uh, she kind of disagrees with what he wants to do just on principle right now. Um, but she trusts Liza and knows that Liza likes to learn things and she likes to learn things. So she's going to agree with Liza and say that that's probably a good thing to do. Okay. So are you, are you going to follow the werewolf's nose? Do it. All right, then. So Thomas leads you back around to the front of the club, where the number of people milling around has reduced greatly since the time you entered. The fact is there's not much to see here at this point. And steadily, the club empties, but you think they'll probably be here for another hour or so before it's uh, completely uh, empty of patrons, of course. No one is making a big song and dance about the fact that the four of you emerge from the alley. No one is saying, hey, you, you four over there. Uh, but the character that you saw earlier, Liza, the vampire, you see he notices you. He was watching the alley as you emerge. And despite the fact that you know that these kindred don't have to do it, he rolls his eyes, a very human gesture, folds his arms, nods. At that point, Liza would give like a little, little uh, overly cheery wave uh, and gauge his reaction to that. Is, is that the vampire? Um, yeah, that, that's him. That's, that's the dead guy. He really obviously looks like a vampire. Right? <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, yeah, wouldn't, wouldn't you want to hide a bit more? I feel. I, anyway. Uh, okay. Are we saying hello to this? Are we walking over to this gentleman? Uh, well, he's making no effort to walk over towards you. In fact, quite the opposite. After giving a nod to Liza, who he may well have spotted looking at him earlier, he turns around and walks in the opposite direction to where Thomas wants to lead you. So by all means, you can you can get slowed down and talk to him. You can split the group again, or you can keep following Thomas. So Liza is very very curious about uh, everything all the time, but she doesn't have any particular reason to believe that this vampire knows anything useful. He was outside. He was pacing around. Um, so she would just kind of file that away as, uh, well, the vampires know where in, or I'm in town and uh, fallen in with uh, an eclectic group, but wouldn't necessarily want to pursue, I don't think. The pacing, the pacing would honestly lead me to believe he does know something or was waiting for a specific something. However, we're following a scent and those get worse the longer we wait. Well, of course, the way scents work, you're going to have to stay on your feet and you walk. You walk through Odin, sir. You're trying to look inconspicuous, you group of four individuals who don't necessarily look like the kinds of people who would buddy up and walk around the city as a gang with Thomas at the lead. Uh, I'm not going to make you constantly roll to see whether you can keep up with the scent. You've decided to continue following it. And it doesn't take you too far. You pass by the library where it seems to you probably a few hours before this woman had spent some time 
and at the same time you get a bit of a mixture of odors as clearly Liza had been here as well at some point but you don't feel it was at the same time not wanting to become distracted you move on the scent is almost gone by the time you reach a small block of flats but you're fairly certain that this is where the lady emerged when she entered the night the door has a uh, pass well not passcode it has a series of buzzers on it and is otherwise locked electronically Hey, I don't you, suppose uh, any of us knows how to get past yeah. this door. Why is there a little hand with some sneaking in? Um, but she will be pointing at uh, our changeling compatriot and being like, do the thing. Do the thing where you go through and then you uh, you open everything up. That was cool. You should do that again. Can I record that? Uh, it won't. I'm not sure it'll come out on a recording. Um... However, if it's an electronic... Is it an electronic lock or is it a security system? It's um, so it's an electronic lock in the sense that you have to be... Um, it has to be opened up from the flat that you've called up with the buzzer. Okay. Um, do I see a video camera? Uh, no. Okay. Uh... Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> no, if I don't see a video camera, no, that, that's not a problem. So uh, second verse, same as the first. I will take a moment, spread myself out, you know, envision letting My everything in. And... Raises her hand before you do that. Uh, y yes, Maya. Don't know what you're doing, but um, I can get us in there just um, like a normal person. If you want. Oh, yeah, I was going to have to, like, turn myself into almost nothing and walk through the door, which is very off-putting to people who catch me. So if you can do it like a normal person, please. I step back and, like, like you know, gesture. Here you go. Liza would look explicitly displeased at this idea of doing things <laughs> like a normal person. <laughs> you get in less trouble with people seeing you on the street when you do things like a normal person. You get in less trouble when people see you breaking into places with lockpicks. It's no big deal. Then walking through the door? Yeah, still less trouble. <laughs> so what does Maya do? So that being said, so to make sure I understand, it is like an electronic keypad that she would have to hack, right, to, to get a password for. So yeah. that's... Yeah, that's what her approach would be, is she'd go up to this keypad and she'd try to hack into it. Okay, all right. Well, that's um, that's probably the kind of thing that Liza... Oh, sorry, Liza. Maya is particularly good at, uh, given the kind of creature she is. Uh, could I go for a computer and intelligence, please? Sure. Thing. I think that gives you... Oh, you know, hacking as well. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, I think you'll get five dice on that. Uh, with the specialty, uh, will be six. Mm. Uh, I am also going to spend a point of willpower on that to add three dice to the roll. Oh, wow. And I succeeded with three dice. So. Very nice. Dial. The way this electronic wor lock uh, works is you have to typically place a thumb or palm on a reader. Uh, it's not a uh, fingerprint reader, but that then lights up the lock that you have to dial a number into. Uh, you're able to bypass it easily enough. This isn't a terribly expensive piece of kit. And so you fool it into thinking that uh, you've typed in the code. Uh, you don't even need to bust it. You just make it work. And the door buzzes and opens. I think the most elegant part of what you've done is the fact that the door opens for you. It doesn't even just go ajar. It opens all the way. Almost as if you've spoken 
to the machine. She would uh, thank the door for opening and uh, she would usher her friends in and just kind of pocket her gear and step back and uh, fall back in line. You get the impression the door says, my pleasure. I like this door. This is a polite door. Liza would uh, make sure to stay behind the werewolf while they're exploring new territory. Okay, it's Thomas. I assume you're leading the group up the stairs. Um, I mean, he's not thrilled about having his back turned to the thing that he doesn't trust and that he doesn't know what it is, but um, <laughs> yeah, he's going to uh, lead uh, the group up the stairs, but just depending on where the, where the scent kind of... Yeah, the elevator in the building isn't working, so you head up the flight of stairs and come third floor, um, reach, I guess, the terminus. Uh, there's few apartments per floor, three, and you reach the door, uh, and it's locked, as you'd imagine. Lots of locked doors in this uh, scenario. I sort of turn back to the group and say, like, anybody else wants to go? It's, this is not my specialty. Normal lock on this one? Yep. Maya would then suggest that she try, like, a normal person before we dissipate into nothing. So. Sure. Once okay. again. Is, uh, is Maya ha trying to... Ha well... This one is a normal lock, but by all means, you can just uh, try picking it like a normal lock pick. She does have a lock picking kit, which gives her plus two to her roll. Yeah, and um, a great four points in larceny. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, she's a. <laughs> now. Typically, I would pair larceny with dexterity if you were doing this in a rush. Uh, you're not, but okay. it seems unfair to penalize you by going for, um, I think we'll say wits, same number of dots. Basically, you're applying your simple logic uh, to this situation. It isn't a terribly complex lock. It's Yale, you know, you, you, you know the way in. So larceny and wits. Really, I'm just looking to see whether you make some catastrophic failure. Um, anything else? I did you're not. Going to I, get uh, I got four successes. Oh wow! Sorry okay. So yeah, you don't even leave a fragment of your pick in the in the lock. The door just again, and this one's a completely manual lock, swings open for you. For the, for this group of characters, every door in Odin so wants to open for them, or specifically for the Promethean. This one's not quite as polite, guys, but it did open, so after you. Yeah, it's giving you the silent treatment. So what uh, sits before you is an apartment. You think it's probably two beds, so not, not bad by any means. Uh, it has a living area, has a bathroom, has a kitchen in the living area as well. And... By no means does this apartment look normal, or indeed habitable. As you pass the bathroom, you can see that it's just about the only clean room in the apartment. Uh, there's still the accoutrements of someone who has been uh, doing their hair, putting on makeup, having a shower before going out for the night a change of clothes on the floor but in the living area there's it looks like there's been a fight it's been some kind of struggle uh, there's a couple of ornaments smashed on the floor and in the adjoining kitchen there's a plate that's smashed on the floor too uh, the washing up has just been stacking up dirty plates there's a dishwasher which has likewise just got far too much in it, hasn't, it hasn't been turned on, it's still hanging open with the shelves hanging out. The bin is close to overflowing. It looks like both the main bedroom and the spare bedroom have not been slept in for some time. Um, that's not what makes them 
on. It's the clothes that have been pulled out of the wardrobe and just thrown around on the floor. It's as if someone has had a breakdown in this place and they've been tearing apart their own living area. So, uh, Liza right now is seated. Um, and one of the things that tends to push her to doing is uh, undervaluing the, her current safety. Uh, so what I would actually like to do right now is spend a point of that to uh, draw on uh, Mimir's wisdom uh, to draw on her horror and gets uh, the safety expender that gives her a number of extra skill dots in mental skills. Um, it would be four for her right now, which I want to pump use to pump up investigation mm-hmm. to like five and then just kind of move through the entire place and try and piece together anything and everything she can with this kind of enhanced investigative ability um, that she's drawing down from her horror. And a side effect of that would be that everyone present, again, would see a brief flare of her horror in reality, which I'm sure the werewolf would be thrilled about. Okay. Um, Well, first of all, describe for the group what your horror looks like as it becomes visible. Uh, so Liza's horror is um, it, it looks like a swarm almost except uh, instead of being a swarm of insects it's a swarm of uh, letters and characters in English in other languages pictograms, stuff that doesn't actually like tie to a language uh, just like a floating swarming um entity composed of language and other symbols to convey um, natural and supernatural meaning, kind of just a single amalgamation. It's humanoid-ish um, for what it's worth, um, but it could definitely never be mistaken. Um, I want to um, have, has Thomas kept his Sort of like, like his belonging, his, equi- his equipment, then like his phone, like his bag. Um, yeah, I yeah. would say so. You didn't just leave it back at the club. I'll uh, first off, like take just as many pictures of the uh, of the of, of the flight as I can, just to kind of like, keep a visual record, I guess. And then sort of let Liza do her investigation, and as she does, sort of um, sort of like try to uh, without anybody necessarily like noticing. Uh, text Garrett um, kind of the one that came with the changeling what is it question mark. I know he doesn't answer his text probably but it's worth trying okay uh, meanwhile while as Liza is uh, doing an investigation what I think will be useful we'll do this but and then so that everyone has something to do take a room pick a room and I'll tell you what you find So, Liza, we'll lead with you. You're in the main living area. You're using your uh, investigation, which you have bumped up dramatically. So, um, intelligence and investigation, please. We will see what she finds. Uh, despite that dramatic bump, uh, the role only got two successes, but that's better than none, so I'll take it. Well, often in any investigation that you've done, and you've probably performed many uh, when trying to seek out hidden knowledge, or knowledge that's been hidden from you at least, the best places to look are laptops and diaries. You aren't able to determine much from what looks like a crime scene in front of you, but you're very good at digging for information and you are able to find both of these things. The diary is more, is a calendar, you know, it's a it's this person's weekly reminder, but she still keeps a paper one and you're able to find it. You're also able to find a laptop underneath a bunch of the debris in the living room. Okay. I would immediately, Liza would immediately start looking through the uh, calendar, but also take a look at the laptop, see if it powers on, see if it's secured or not secured. Uh, she suspects she may need to draw on a uh, compatriot's assistance if it is secure. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, Maya, where are you going in all of this? Uh, presumably, Maya would notice uh, Liza pull out the laptop in the diary. Yeah. Um, 
From the looks of it, it didn't sound like it in your description. Does she see any other signs of any kind of like home office or desktop computer, or is the laptop the only kind of electronics she sees? Uh, you see that there's a tablet uh, on a bookshelf. Okay. Uh, she would gather that and the laptop from Liza, assuming Liza doesn't have any uh, problems with that, and she'd set herself up kind of in the kitchen to start looking into those electronics and see what she can maybe find from those. You um, sweep the toaster and kettle off to the side to give yourself some room. You make a nice, neat square, just there, just the right size to put the laptop down, open it up, prop the tablet up, work on both of them at the same time. Um, as you open it up, Liza, near you, you do see that there's a password to gain entry to the laptop. The the tablet, not so much. It's uh, just open straight away. It seems to be a... not a public rental. It's not her property. You see immediately it's owned by the Historical Society of Odense. They have a very boring background on the tablet. That identifies their name, their telephone number, and email address. Wise would definitely be content to let the expert work on the laptop and then uh, continue looking through the calendar and see if she can find anything out there. Okay, and what about Connor? Well, the first thing I would do is see if there's a fire escape. Uh, not from this apartment, no. Plenty of windows, but no fire escape. How high up are we? You're on the third floor. <sighs> Any secondary means of leaving when the police inevitably show up to search her apartment? Um, none that are obvious to you, no. Okay. I so will mention that to against- everyone else. I will mention it to everyone else. I do not think that the police will immediately be running to her apartment, but they will be here, and it will not be that long, potentially. Um, with that, uh, what what areas have not been covered? Uh, so the bedrooms and the bathroom. Okay, so the, the, I would look real quick in the two bedrooms, just in the, are they both being used? It appears that they both have been, but again, not recently. Uh, and it's that that's very much guesswork. Uh, the only reason you can guess that is based on the mess everywhere else. The, the beds themselves seem made up surprisingly tidily for someone who's gone through some kind of uh, breakdown. Um, There's no layer of dust will, or anything like that. Can I determine which bedroom is uh, there? Yes, uh, there is one with far more adornments and um, a more packed wardrobe. But the other one does have a wardrobe, so it doesn't look like a guest room. It actually looks more like someone else lives there. Yep. Okay. There is, there's a single wardrobe, and a, well, both rooms have got a double bed, a uh, single wardrobe in the guest room, a built-in wardrobe in the main bedroom. I will uh, I'll go through the main bedroom. Okay. Uh, you pour through some of the clothes. Some of these have been treated very badly. It's like they've been ripped in anger. Um, you're kind of getting flashes. And maybe it's your attunement to emotions, seasons, the cycle of death, rebirth. There's been a lot of passion expelled here. Uh, that's not uncommon for a bedroom, especially a master bedroom. But there's been a great loss that occurred in this room. You can feel that. Just as you're looking through everything, it resonates with you quite quite soundly. Hmm. You almost feel like and this is the, the strange thing, the eerie thing for one such as yourself, that just like a fairy story, if you were to step into that wardrobe, the built-in one, you'd find a lot of giggling little goblins laughing 
or whatever had taken place in here. So this is a very emotionally charged room. Um, Mm -hmm. So there are there's clothes that have been ripped in anger, not passion, but anger, because those are very different. Um, I would look for other signs of that anger to see how ramping it was getting, because I'm assuming it feels like she took her life, maybe even not in depression, but in anger. Uh, or in anger itself, which can manifest as depression. I, I don't know, but this loss would cause anger, depression, uh, so many things. Figuring out what that loss is is probably important, and figuring out why it was supernaturally boosted or supernaturally affected. Uh, we're also going to need to see if there's any other evidence of this happening elsewhere. Hmm. The bedroom itself, everything seems to have been concentrated largely on the wardrobe, although you do find a photo, uh, and this has fallen down beside between a chest of drawers and the bed, and mm-hmm. it, there's the telltale sign of a broken frame, a uh, broken pane. Um, you never met the woman, of course, the one who died, but you can assume, perhaps, that the two women in the photo of them one of them is probably the deceased it's uh, clearly a couple they appeared loving in the photo of course they wouldn't put some kind of Victorian grim <laughs> photo uh, but they they have arms around each other they appear to be in the happiness of their youth again speaking of resonance for a changeling this is the kind of memory that individuals such as yourself yeah. cling on to and place a great deal of importance on. Now, going on to Thomas. Your phone buzzes. Right. Um, I pick up the phone and just... Uh, I mean, uh, well, can I check who the, who the caller is? Uh, yeah, it's Garrett. Shocker. But yeah, I'll pick up the phone. You Did you make it out, then? Yes. Get We're... interviewed by the police? Sorry? Did you get interviewed by the police? No. Did you? No. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm at the place of uh Old Little Inferno. Who appointed you, detective? Never mind that. You asked me what your friend is. Because uh, I'm guessing you're in her company now. Hmm? Mm-hmm. Uh, Rio has spoken about them sometimes. There's one in the zoo. They call themselves beasts, as if we're not the beasts. Well... Some call themselves beasts, some call themselves very highly specified names I don't remember, not my area of expertise. You can always smell them. They're like a cornucopia, and they smell like some sauce with too many spices in. They have designs on what we hold. And the kinds of things they do, Tommy boy, they really fuck up the shadow with it. What do we do? You find out what she's good for, take her for what she's worth, then you either kick her out of the city or you kill her. I very much doubt that she's going to try and find an equal footing with us. They have no respect for our kind. Oh, they pretend to. They pretend to be our friends. Well, I'm t- telling you all this secondhand. I've met very few of them. But that one in the zoo? Well, he stays in the zoo. He knows not to come out. We put the boots to him before you joined our pack. It 
try to join. Yeah, like fair. Said, they pretend to be our friends. Uh, yeah, thanks for that. I'll. Yeah. No. Um. So you're the I'll detective now. I just there's something off about all of this, and if there's something super, I'm sort of like I'm trying to kind of like use the right words so the other people in the flat don't really pick up on what I'm saying. Whatever is happening isn't normal, and I want to know what's happening. Hey, I'm not judging you and the company you keep. You're my best friend, after all. Of course. But do keep in mind the pack you belong to. I'm going to do you a solid. I'm not going to tell Kalia what you're up to with outsiders. Because I am sure the Odin's Tower already knows. He knows. Mm Mm-hmm. But I'm not going to tell Kalia. You do your little investigation, then you weigh up. Is this something we should be looking into rather than you and your bunch of oddities? I will. I'm genuinely... We don't look. I see eye to eye to eye to eye uh, in anything, but generally, thanks. Hmm. Well, like I said, I'm doing you a solid. You owe me now. The low, you know, respect the high. Damn right they do. So, are you going to be meeting up with us before the night is out? Of course. Uh, any particular place or same place as always? Uh, swing by the cathedral. Will do. I'll make sure that Kalia knows you're heading in our direction in the next couple of hours. I've got a place I need to patrol, but I'll be there. Right, sir. Thanks. Just Don't bring your friends. I'm not planning on it. He hangs up. Is there anywhere in the apartment you're particularly intent on searching? I'm out of character. I'm sort of torn between um, checking the other bedroom to kind of pick up just like an item of clothing to get like a scent of somebody, or I'm torn between checking the bathroom to see if. Uh, I mean, is that where like the scent of the perfume kind of like originates from? That kind of. Yes. But it's just more of a. Uh, I don't know. Ideally, both, but I don't think we have time to do both. I think it's a better idea to go for the um, for the guest bath- uh, for the uh, for, for the guest bedroom because I just want to figure out somebody who might have been close to her. Okay, you head to the guest bedroom. Um, your immediate interpretation of what you can see around here is that perhaps a lodger lives here. Mm. This doesn't have as much of personal affectation as uh, the rest of the apartment, such as it is, it does. Uh, it looks like there is a, well, it's a similar scene of destruction. You know, a few of the clothes pulled out of the wardrobe, drawers left open, and one of them emptied onto the bed. It looks like someone was searching for something. Uh, but difficult to see whether it was found from what you can tell again just as Connor was able to find this room hasn't been slept in you'd you'd estimate for at least a a week but someone definitely lived here at some point are there um, can I roll like maybe investigation or something to see if I can find any kind of like personal effects or just even like a discarded piece of clothes or something that might still be like yeah, we're... absolutely. Uh, could you do uh, an intelligence and investigation for me, please? Okay, um, I'll tell you this one for free. The clothing okay. in this room is male. Okay. Oh, right, because he... Uh... Uh, two successes. Two successes, okay. Uh, All right, well, here's something a bit interesting on your two successes. Uh, One of the um, 
items you find from the upturned drawer of particular interest is an ID card. It's a student ID. Uh, identifies a young man, young in the sense that the ID identifies him as being 19 years old, uh, by the name of Oscar Jimenez. Okay. Um, I'll just pocket the card for now because I still, yeah, Thomas still doesn't trust all these new people. Um, but that's pretty much all he like all I can pick up. Like, there's nothing else left, is there? Uh, you would assume that the clothing belongs to Oscar at some point. There is some Krona in one of the drawers uh, that's again been open. So some a bit of cash if you want to commit a bit of petty theft. No. Nah. Um, there's a little bit of fiction it would appear that Oscar is a reader of the classics and um, specifically the complete works of Hans Christian Andersen lies open and face down on the floor uh, the most striking thing about this room is again the lack of personality in this room uh, that may just mean he's only just moved in. But if he's a student who's just taken the space up as lodgings, perhaps he's just not brought anything that's personally important. I mean, I have to ask, because I, I think I know the answer, but um, what page is the, uh, the book open to? Ah, good, good question. You open the book. And uh, it opens up onto the story of the Little Mermaid. Hmm. Um, I mean, I, out of character, I'm interesting in character. I don't think Thomas has like any idea of what, whether that will actually have any meaning. But he, I, I'll, he'll keep it in mind. But leave the book there. So if I can still check the bathroom, that's fine. But if there's no time, then we can move on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'm going to go back to uh, Maya and Liza. Uh, and I will just say, Connor, you're starting to feel a bit agitated about the possibility that the police might arrive. But Maya and Liza in the kitchen. As Maya is working on the laptop, uh, Liza, are you just standing by to record any information you might see? Oh, yeah, absolutely. She's got her phone out ready to uh, take pictures or uh, download anything necessary. Uh, mm -hmm. And essentially watching Maya work. Uh, Maya, are you focusing your attention on the tablet, which doesn't require unlocking, or the laptop that does? Uh, the laptop that does. Okay. Uh, in that case, I will request another computer and intelligence, unless you want to have a crack at the password yourself that won't require a roll. Uh, no, that's okay. Maya doesn't know that many words, so we're going to try and hack it out. So... That will give her six with her specialty, and we succeeded with two successes. Two successes, okay. Um, you don't guess the password, you just bypass the screen. Uh, you enter the laptop in its safe mode, and then from the safe mode you access the, um, the home screen. Uh, you basically backdoor the security. And so you're into the main laptop. Uh, you're able to access the documents, the search history on the internet, um, its cookies, everything. Uh, this isn't some highly classified, secure laptop. This is just a home device. And so it has everything on it that you'd expect to find on a home device. But is there anything in particular that you're looking for? Maya isn't very sure. Um, from the things that she has found, just other people having asked her to find, she would look through the internet search history. That tends to be something that people are genu generally interested in. Um, so that would be step number one. Step number two um, would be noticing any tabs of a browser that are already opened, as if like the laptop were just shut. Um, just to try and see what they were up to before they closed the laptop. Hmm. Um, it would appear that the owner of this laptop has mostly been using it for work. Um, 
that there's the usual array of um, forum posts, social media, um, pornography, but the the work side appears to be historical research, and the main focus of this historical research appears to be on the subject of something called the Nightling Saga, or Nightlinga Saga, uh, which, from your brief read, it describes events uh, surrounding some of the previous kings, the monarchs of Denmark and Sweden and Norway. Um, it's an old work, penned or uh, illuminated by monks uh, many centuries ago and is something that is widely spread in its uh, accessible volume but its original iterations are, are rare to find uh, Maya would hand this off to Liza she's the one who seems more apt to decipher all of that information um, and if that seems to be the only real relevant thing on the laptop um, she would shift her focus to the tablet while Liza was looking for the research yeah, how, uh, how familiar would Liza be with this saga she does have four dots in academics oh go for it um, go for academics and intelligence please Liza Lots more dice getting rolled in this session. Ah, the game is afoot. Uh, I got two successes on that one. Two successes. You've heard of the Nightling Saga. Uh, its main focus is on King Carnut, a uh, fairly well-known Danish king, as far as uh, any Danish king is well-known. And um, you, from your understanding of the... Um, the Nightlinga Saga's, I guess, renown. Uh, an original copy is held at the City Cathedral. Is there any information um, in the laptop regarding the saga that differs from what she knows to be any of the official stories? Uh, That's um, nothing that you can immediately find, I would say. That's a very good question, but that's the kind of thing that might take some research. Okay. Um, that sounds like that's a, a thing for later. So, uh, Liza, the question is, do we steal the laptop or just steal the files? That is the question. Uh, she would ask Maya how easily she could get all the files off of it um, that mattered and onto their films. She has the... Uh, flash drives and key logging software and all the extra accessories for um, electronic hacking so she could very easily get that off onto a flash drive, upload it at a later time and email it out to the phones so that's not an issue. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and you'd probably be able to do that rapidly. Again, this is this isn't a gaming laptop. There isn't a, you know, there isn't a there aren't terabytes of information on here. Uh, the file transfer would be pretty swift that's what she would do then she'd go ahead and plan on transferring the files so that she could take that and dole it out later so uh, you planning on doing that with the tablet as well yeah let's uh, we'll take the files off the tablet as well okay all right then so I will um, swing back round to Connor okay uh, I am going to Connor would head into the other room and ask Liza for their cell phone number. I uh, think. Liza would hand it over uh, okay. immediately, like reciting. Uh, yeah. Maybe a little too immediately. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 you can know your own. A friend um, of the I put it in my phone and I say, I am going downstairs. I will call you when the police are even pulling up you'll have 60 seconds or 90 seconds to get out at that point. Uh, are we worried about like a investigation right now? Is that, I'm not used to very efficient police forces, but. Uh... 
they don't investigate this level of thing that often, depending on the investigator who it's gone to, yes. Okay, noted. Turning the volume on on my phone. Here's hoping uh, the uh, little incident earlier didn't damage that in any way. Yeah, good. Okay, uh, and I head downstairs. Okay. Um, I'm going to be hanging out a little bit outside in the I'm outside having a smoke type of thing. Um, so I can see when a police car or even a car that isn't police, but obviously has an investigator in it pulls up. 